I am going to talk about um, this great course, Plant Science and Introduction to Botany, by Professor Catherine Clyer. I think. I don't remember. But anyway, I took these notes a long time ago. I just um, haven't talked about it yet, so I haven't returned it to the library. It's not due for a while. It's um, four DVDs long, and I took so many notes because, well, you know I am really into botany and such things. So anyway, it's also like um, an introduction to horticulture, really. Um, a lot of this sort of thing I learned with horticulture. And there were like a lot of the plants that she covered that were interesting. I had uh, learned about independently um, when I was a teenager because it's what I was really into. So I would... Um, go through, I had a big thick encyclopedia of plants and I would go through, uh, my grandma gave it to me. Well, she lent it to me. She said, if ever I need it, I'll know where to find it. So she really, she got it for herself, but she knew that I was really into plants. So she, she never asked for it back because she didn't actually want it back from me. But that was wonderful for her to get me that. And so I'd go through it and I'd memorize all the Latin names and stuff like that. Anyway, I don't know. I guess kids are into different things. That's what I was into. So um, I'm just going to read a couple of the notes that I took from a couple of the lectures that I found most useful for me. I mean, some of the some of the things have have changed. Like they, I remember I was working with a woman when I worked at a zoo. Um, she was telling me that what she really loved about knowing Latin plant Latin plant names um, was that they never change and I was like what are you talking about they change all the time they're constantly reordering things right but that may that may be at an end because now they can actually look at plants um, genetically right they can look at the genes and and categories categorize them appropriately one would think now right so we'll see what happens with botany I don't know but anyway um, I'm just gonna read lecture 23 and lecture 24 notes because it's at the end and if you find them interesting well surely you'll find the rest interesting and you should borrow this wonderful great course from your local public library and this one came from Edmonton I think for for me let's see yep um, most of the great courses that I borrow end up coming from uh, Edmonton public library system so I get them in Tal and they send them all over send send them right to me right to my door almost so uh, lecture 23 um, foxglove I wrote fox glaze um, digitalis stimulates heart William withering in 18th century discovered that a patient suffering from congestive heart failure improved after using a traditional herbal remedy foxglove tea to slow heart rate which in while increasing the strength of the heart's contractions, which helps kidneys filter fluid out of lungs. Um, digoxin is still a part of mainstream medicine. Poison oak is not oak. Leaves are lobed, so they look similar. Is in the Anacardiaceae family, cashew and mango in this family. The poison in poison oak, poison ivy, and poison sumac is urushriol. urushriol. It moves through pores in your skin to your bloodstream. Cells pick it up and give it to helper T cells, which signal immune system to kill all urushiol presenting cells. This response causes a rash. The itches from inflammatory proteins produced by helper T cells. Some people's proteins don't remember urushiol and they don't ever have a reaction. Water hemlock causes a neuromuscular blockage. The plant looks a lot like wild carrot and wild celery, all APAC. Conine has a close structure to nicotine. Ortiga is a type of stinging metal and gives us a rash or hives. Uricaceae is the family of both stinging nettle and nettle tree. This whole family stings, pretty much. Your 
Urticaria is the medicinal name for hives. The stinging hair is a trichome that is made of brittle silica with a small spherical bulb on the very tip. When trichome is disturbed, the trichome breaks and injects the toxin from the bulbous tip into your skin. Nettle toxin contains histamine, causes an inflammatory response. You can take an antihistamine to treat sting from nettle. The toxin contains neurotransmitters, acetylcholine and serotonin, happy tr neurotransmitter, but in this case it causes pain. The toxin also contains a few acids, including formic acid, the sting compound of ant venom, tartaric acid and oxalic acid. Stinging nettle also has an antimicrobial properties and could be useful for ulcers. Many other poisonous plants out there, like oleander, castor bean, deadly nightshade, poison hemlock, cecropia, is a fast-growing pioneer tree in Central America. Pioneer species best um, grown in disturbed areas like landslide. Most pioneers grow fast. Cecropia contains latex. Cecropia and ants live symbiotically. The genus Azteca are found with different species of Cecropia. The trees produce hollow stems to house the ants. The queen just chews a hole in the stem and moves in. There aren't any latex ducts there to prevent her habitation. The tree encourages these ants by offering oil-rich droplets called mullerian bodies. These treats are harvested by the ants. These mullerian bodies don't contain sugar until ripe. Ants attack any animal that tries to eat cecropia, nibble off any plant that grows on it. Invasive plants are concerning. They are non-native. Cheatgrass might be most hated in western U.S. Um, cheatgrass okay forage for cattle in early spring. It's a winter annual. It germinates in fall. Diffuse knapweed, Centoria diffusa, is from sunflower family. They're a Mediterranean plant. It has exudates in roots that prevent growth of North American grasses. Grasses from Mediterranean are immune to those exudates, allelopathy. Um, kudza vine from southern U.S. Kudza was brought into U.S. to control soil erosion during the Great Dust Bowl in 1930s. This plant covers over 2,200, no, 227,000 acres and will eventually take over the south, according to some. But um, according to U.S. Uh, Forest Service, the, that's the 227,000 acres. Others say it covers 7 million acres. Uh, Asian pivot, privet, privet, another invasive plant covered about 3.2 million acres. Kosha can make livestock sick occasionally due to increased nitrate levels. Kosha is native to Asia and introduced as an ornamental. It has a weedy habit. A weed is any plant growing where it isn't wanted. Norway maple can display sugar maple in eastern U.S. Sugar maple leaves have deeper V's toward midrib. Margin teeth are different. Abrus precatris jacurity is invasive and extremely toxic. It's a member of the pea family with long pinnate or feather-like leaves. The seeds of this plant are red with black on the tip. These seeds are used as beads for percussion instruments and jewelry. The entire plant contains the toxin abrin, which is similar to chemical made up, make up of ricin, the poison found in castor beans. Ingestion of the whole seeds usually won't cause death because of a tough seed coat. If seeds are chewed though, they can kill you. Carnivorous plant, 600 species, Venus flytrap is native to North and South Carolina, bogs and swamps. Carnivorous plants still photosynthesize. These plants are usually found in environments low nitro nitrogen. Plants tend to secrete enzymes to speed up decomposition of the in insect. Some plants trap insects in water, others on sticky leaves. Plastic trait is one that takes different forms, so carnivorous.